Hello everyone, no introduction needed. I'm Super, and today on episode 3 of the NeverEnding Siege series, I am going to take a look at our map of Coastline against Empire in the winner's bracket quarterfinals. So the winner of this match essentially was guaranteed top 3 at this year's Invitational. And talk about why we made some of the decisions we made. I'm going to try to not talk too much about what we could have done because those are things in hindsight that we didn't know at the time. And rather, I'm going to talk about why we did the things we did. So for a little backstory, this was the second time we were playing Coastline against Empire. Empire was in our groups, and they defeated us 2-1 maps, with the last map being Coastline. They defeated us 7-5. In that series, we won four attacks, and we were only able to win one defense. We end up winning this match in overtime, but I believe at one point we go down 3-6. And I want to talk about what happened and some of the adjustments we made during this series. But first, you'll notice that we kind of changed some of our bans from what we typically do. For the first time we played Empire on Coastline, we banned Thatcher, and I believe we banned Mira against their Valkyrie. So going into this next match, we can take a look at this. This is all information on Team Empire for stage three of EUL. So what's important to me really, and these are just general statistics that show you how they typically ban, is one, looking at what they normally ban on Coastline. So going into this match, we already knew, pretty much guaranteed that Empire was going to ban Nomad with 100% ban rate and Valkyrie with 100% ban rate. So already we can kind of plan around that. Now, what I wanted to look at, especially after seeing how our first match played out, was their ratings on Serpent, certain operators on Coastline and try to take advantage of any high rated operators that they play that we may not particularly use that much based off of our current strats for the Invitational. So I'm looking at Coastline here, and as you see, Alibi is not that great for them. Aruni's pretty solid at a 41% play rate, but it only has a 46% win rate. So my eye kind of goes towards this. They play Smoke at a pretty high clip. This is a good rating for a Smoke. Typically, Smoke's in the 0.8s or 0.9s. They play at 67% of the time. We don't really play Smoke on Coastline, and they have almost a 60% win rate on smoke on coastline which obviously is more of an attacker sided map plus in my head i'm thinking okay that removes a shield that removes a shotgun so they're gonna have to run something else that they maybe wouldn't normally run what would that be usually it'd be mute but here we see they're much worse rated on mute and they already play mute 89 percent of the time so in reality, they can't really replace the smoke because they're already playing mute so much. So I decide before the match that we're going to ban smoke. We've never banned that and they won't anticipate that. Then we go to the attacker side. And again, we'll look at what they play here. So what I notice is that when Thatcher is available, they only have a 0.8 rating on it at a 40% play rate and a 41% win rate. I also noticed from watching their VOD where they had played Coastline against another team that when Thatcher was left up, Dan was playing Thatcher instead of Finca. If you notice here, Dan has a 1.96 rating on Finca at a 47% play rate, winning 65% of the rounds. So in my head, I thought if we leave Thatcher up, Dan will play Thatcher and he won't play Finca. So that's a huge win for us. So then I look at what else they're using. I notice that they don't, they've never played ace on this map, or at least typically they have not played ace. But they play Habana 100% of the time, and they have a pretty good rating on Habana. So I thought, okay, what would happen if we ban Habana? Obviously, we play Habana on this map as well, but. I believe that I can make it work using ace. Obviously, you use clear, you use the ability, you know, two and four pellet things. So it will hurt a little bit. But 
this is a team that has never played ace on this map and they have a hundred percent play rate on habana and even further backing that up these are their statistics from strictly invitational up until this point where it once again backs up what i said where dan or the thatcher player has a 0.4 rating but finca is still almost a 2.0 rating and habana is even a little better here at 1.16 at a hundred percent play rate if you go down to smoke you're going to see the same thing really for smoke smoke they're still playing 72 percent of the time the rating's not as good but mute's even worse and they're already playing mute 100 percent of the time so we decide before this match that we're going to ban habana and we're going to ban smoke so now let's get into the match and we'll try to talk about some of the things we did and why we did it i'm gonna try to skip through to some points of this so they banned nomad as we expect and they ban Valk, as we expect. So the ban phase goes as we expected. Now, I will say, going into this map, we did not anticipate Empire to really counter much. We didn't really think that they were a team that liked to change things. I even saw an interview with Joystick where he basically said, Team Empire does not believe in countering. They believe that if they're the better team, they will just beat you playing the way they want to play. What ends up happening is Empire did actually change a few things based off of our previous match. And you'll see here, they bring the Aruni. So for Hookah, typically we like to do just a straight Hookah and Sunrise take. And as you're going to see here, they end up putting a decent amount of utility stacked towards Hookah. Now it's nothing we haven't seen before, obviously. But they did make some slight adjustments that they did not do in the match before. So Yeti gets a very a very early pick on Joystick. I believe that was in Sunrise as he was trying to get aggressive. And now we're droning in Hookah to see what the situation is. At this point, we are not aware, obviously, that they don't have Jaeger. And Dan's doing a pretty decent job here of shooting drones that prevent us from really identifying that there is no Jaeger on this top cool vibe area. So we're a little worried about clear, especially because normally i'm habana and now i'm ace so i'm not going to have the flashbangs that i would typically have so now i think i'm able to identify that there's nothing there and as we do that yeti's going to get another kill and so we just need to nade the mute off of the wall although there are wamais and because we're taking so long normally i will say we are not this slow in terms of clearing utility this might be a case of starting out slow that dan is given more time here to keep stacking wamais and then i believe always ran out of either top here or uh kitchen window and he's going to kill grixer who was side repelled here so they get a kill yeah he runs out of the uh theater door and kills grixer repelled on the uh, outside of the wall and to be honest we're just kind of I know it's at 140, but we typically as a team are faster than this. Maybe it's because uh, we don't have the Habana flashbangs. And that's obviously something that we, you know, we did that to ourselves. So we just have to be able to deal with. I will say this isn't something that we've practiced or anything. It's just something that we decided to do going into this match. And obviously you'll see it does impact us maybe a little bit on our attacks. So... The reason we have Rex and Repel Big Wino now is so that he can cut off this pirate single wall. So when we try to ace the left wall towards Cool Vibe, because that's what I'm trying to do, I want to open up that left panel for Cool Vibe so that we know there's nobody there. And then they're all basically stuck either on Cool Vibe stairs or in the hall. Rex and his Repel here just to make sure that they cannot play this area and shoot open the wall, which as you see, we now have the wall open. 
Unfortunately, Shepard is now going to kill Kansan, who is also outside of Hookah Balk. So our two grenade players, and for this particular site, our two entry players have both been eliminated outside of Hookah. So now we're left to scramble a little bit with Yeti down by Sunrise or in that area. I'm on Hookah Balcony and Rexen is repelled big window. And then Always is going to kill Rexen. I believe he just kills him from the blue window. So our 5v3 quickly goes to a 3v2 in favor of Empire. And if you notice, we really didn't even do anything. They just kind of swung us and won the fight. So this is a situation where maybe you as the Sonics play safer areas or don't expose as much. But in reality, it wasn't like we were really doing anything. We were just kind of get swung on. So I'm going to kill one player repelled from hookah window. So now it's a 2v2. I believe at this point, Yeti does know that there's a player on cool vibe. So we have one minute to work with here. And I do ping one player, I believe, as I think he's lit me for some health. So Yeti's going to bust a lion out. And unfortunately, I don't think that he knew that that Malusi was there. So now the lion kind of goes to waste. So now our only option really is to flash. And I think that's a mistake right there. If Yeti is going to flash, I think we just have to commit to pushing that. Um, I don't think we had any discussion on what kind of utility we had right there. But I think given what we have, which is essentially nothing, we have to use what we have and just try to push off of that. That player on cool vibe might have been full blind right there. And if anything, maybe this turns into a 1v1. So now, in reality, this has turned into kind of a, a pretty rough round for us. So we're trying to drone out, and mainly we're trying to find Shepard, because we are somewhat aware of this player on Cool Vibe, as you see, but we don't have that good of an idea where Shepard is. So I open up this 90 wall just to make sure that Shepard's not there. So now we know he's not there, and I'm kind of trying to hold this swing. But unfortunately, Yeti doesn't hit that shot. Although, if we're being real, it looks like he kind of did. I feel like... I mean, he did no damage there, and I feel like he shot them. Maybe that's just the DMR in action. Uh, I think another mistake here is we... Yeti still had another lion. I don't think we knew this. We could have definitely used this lion to push here. Although, we still had the element of surprise this guy wasn't ready for that we just didn't get that fight and now it's a 2v1 for me and i know always is cool vibe but he plays a smart and he's gonna back up but we don't know where the other player is and that's a wrap so empire do a very good job that round of bringing back a 3v5 and as you see it kind of fell apart for us but we didn't really do anything i would say costly besides maybe just our two hookah players dying with our advantage without really uh anything going on so now empire is going to go to kitchen we'll skip through a little bit here and what we'll see is they are heavily stacking for a service take this is another thing that they did not necessarily do last time and uh this is something that they're they're changing for us. As you see, they, they clearly identified that we were having some success against them doing a service take. They have a Bulletproof, Maestro, two Gates, Barb, and two ADSs. Obviously, to start the round, we're not going to necessarily know they have all of that stacked there, but we are going to be aware of the Gates. So our initial plan here is we want to usually try to take top and then just sledge the floor out and move them back a little bit so we can push service especially if it's not really being defended that that heavily and as you see that's pretty much what we're doing and kansan seems to have identified that there are also uh, rooney gates and then in this area we have grixer and yeti looking at pushing uh hookah which they'll see there is somebody holding and i believe there's even another player billiard so our initial clear is meeting some resistance so 
that. But meanwhile, Jason, as long as Don Henry now is. So obviously they identified there's not really a lot here. This is not a situation where this is just unpushable. So they're going to nade and move him back. He's going to get lit a little bit and he's just going to back up. They've now also droned out Joystick, so they know he's Sunrise, and Joystick's going to try to move his way up Cool Vibe. And Scyther's there to help him. As myself, Rexon, and Kansan at the same time are also moving through theater. Again, I will say, I think we are moving slower than we traditionally do. In NAL, we are the fastest paced team on attack. And I do think a little bit of this is just the nerve of... This is a match for top three at Invitational. So I think we're starting off this match uh, a little bit slower than I think we, we typically play. So I tried to ace this wall as we were able to get the mute off of it, but they had a hole underneath, I believe, which they shot it off. So that's going to stall us out a little bit, but we're just going to go ahead and decide to push. And we identified when we were getting the mute off that there was no ADS. Unfortunately, that nade's not going to do a lot of damage. And Dan's going to back him up. And then always hits a really nice shot on Kansan. But I believe Grixer's here and he's going to be able to trade this. Because he doesn't realize he's pushed up. And I do think in this situation we could have also maybe used a lion more effectively to push off of. But I don't think Yeti had a lion available yet. And so Rexon's going to win that fight as he knew that play. Oh, as he knew that player was trapped in this corner and then obviously we've also droned out as you see i'm in the back here holding towards a drone that there's another player on white so rexon's gonna kill that player and then hit a nice pre-fire basically onto dan and now that gives us the 4v3 advantage and hopefully grixer is able to finka up rexon's health a little bit which he does so now we have a 4v3, but this has taken us longer than it usually would. And we have 40 seconds now to decide what we want to do. But keep in mind, we also have not really identified that site uh, is stacked towards service. And we have lost our only vertical pressure. So our normal take here is going to be a little wonky. So understanding that it's going to be difficult for us to push service with no vertical pressure, I believe we're going to try to take Sunrise, but Joystick has a off position there and he's going to catch Yeti not really prepared for him to be in this position. And we are just stalling out a little bit. I guess we didn't call Yeti here. I'm curious to see what we ended up doing. I actually can't remember. Okay, so we real uh, now I now I remember what we did. So I think Yeti actually droned Joystick and Sunrise. So we knew one player was Sunrise. We obviously identify that there are no we can't do anything about top down pressure here. So we're going to drop the lobby hatch and try to push into bathroom to plant service here. Uh, you hear a smoke go off as well. Rexen, I believe, is smoking off kitchen hall so that when we drop the hatch. We already know there's a player sunrise so this is going to be smoked off so essentially we have the ability to move in here now obviously with 10 seconds left and maestro staring you down this is going to be a a difficult situation um but we'll see how it plays out so yeti's able to take out the main lobby player shepherd kills me running into the bathroom with the bomb and we're unable to trade that and that's the round. What was the main issue? Time. I think our decision making here is perfectly fine. We realize we can't do service because of the gates. So we don't really have any other option here because we took long than to drop the hatch and try to push into bathroom. The problem is, is that the maestro here is holding. Now, I think the one thing we could have potentially done better is Grixer just jump in kitchen window Instead, Grixer's kind of just holding for the run back 
because he knows joystick is on this side but i think he's worried about jumping in kitchen window because he knows joystick is here but i think probably the optimal play is for Grixer to just jump in kitchen window and try to kill the maestro so we can at least get in service side. But I think call wise, this was a fine call. So Grixer does jump in. Obviously, it ends up being too late. And he actually is almost pretty close to killing that player. I think if Grixer does that when we all go, he probably kills maestro and maybe gets traded. But that potentially does give us the service control that we were looking for. So I think the call was fine. I think we we're just taking too long to kind of um, get to where we need to be. So now Empire is going to go to blue bar. And they have a, they are playing inside of service, but it's a pretty light hold. There's a Malusi here, a Malusi here. And one player in this area, or maybe he'll float around here and just go back and forth. But this isn't what I would call a hard hold or anything for, for a service push. And ideally, what we want to do is take kitchen, open up the mud walls. And then once you have kitchen, the site's pretty much cut in half. So they can't really play anywhere in sight. So Dan's going to take out Yeti, I think, off of maybe an aggressive spawn. Oh, actually, I remember Dan, I think, spawn peaked the drone hole um, and bathroom and killed Yeti outside. So obviously, now we lose flashbangs, we lose our lion, and we go man down very early in the round, which always makes it a little difficult. So he, he shoots down the kitchen window, so I'm going to claymore it just in case he tries to jump out to protect mud. It seems like he probably heard that, to be honest. So Rex in right now, he's on a Twitch drone, and he's clearing because what Empire do, and we knew this from Avad that I, I shared with the team, but they stack ADSs mud side, and then they mute the wall, and usually they have a shield. I think in this situation, they don't actually have the shield because we ban smoke, but... Basically, Rexon is just trying to clear the ADSs and the mute off the mud wall so that we can ace it. But Dan does a little bit of damage onto Rexon there, and I believe we're also able to get the mud wall open. But here are some issues. Because Yeti died, typically Yeti's going to be front door, shoot this down, and he can kind of, like for instance... This player would not be able to run out a bathroom because Yeti would be there to kill him. And typically Rexon and Kanzen are pushing in service while Yeti covers main lobby or maybe one pressure's kitchen window. Because we lost Yeti, this is now a two-man job, which is kind of hard to do. So what we end up doing is we have to call off service because that doesn't really seem like it's going to be pushable for us. We're just going to focus on mud and see if anything's available for us to take advantage of around office, potentially blue bar. So we're able to open the mud wall, but because we lost a team member early, they're pretty stacked in sight. There's, two here and then we saw one in office with the hole all the way through the idea usually by having kitchen pressure is there will pretty much usually only be one person in sight because they're trying to help kitchen from you know the the door whatever and we can try to take advantage of the one player in sight sort of like a distraction we decide that we're not going to be able to get an office because they have a player there so we divert back once again to trying to push service into Dan because Dan is the only person here. For whatever reason, it looks like Kanzen and Rexen, who are the ones droning this, decide that this isn't going to be pushable for them. Um, and I think he was on a drone there too, so we know he's there. And so Rexen pretty much is holding kitchen window to maybe try to jump in this player, and we're trying to just do something here blue bar side or sorry mud side as we're spotting out maestro cams that we need cleared and things like that 
obviously Kansan has to rotate around to help us clear things because once again not having a bond is kind of coming into play because the ace doesn't have any flashbangs Once again, though, this is a good example of us just taking longer than we typically would. So I believe Grixer just naded off the Maestro that we were pinging. And we've pretty much decided at this point that we want to try to force fight and mud because we really haven't taken anything on the map at this point. So Rexen's kind of playing to potentially kill Dan rotating back or to jump in behind them. And we're just looking to see if we can get any nade picks or anything because we do know we cleared the ADS's uh, Sunrise side. Grexer tries to make a little bit of an aggressive play and he's going to get taken down by Joystick. And off of that play, we tried to nade. Kansan tried to nade Shepard and it does some damage, but it doesn't get the kill. So now, once again, we're in a 5v3, and it's not looking good for us in terms of sight. So now Rexon rotates back to us, and we're going to say R Richie just has to try to open up something on basically office side because there's no way we're going to win this round just pushing into mud. We don't really have any other options because we never cleared kitchen, but... We just have to try to get an opening somewhere else. This round is a good example of a team stalling out because of an early pick. And our own ban, which it does end up helping us because when we're on defense, we win quite a few defensive rounds. But this is also an example of our own ban coming to hurt us because we don't have the flashbangs here that I typically would have that we could use to push sight or potentially do things a little faster, especially with the grenades. So Kansan's able to get in and get a kill. And off of that, we try to push in as Rexon jumps in the window, but he's killed. And then at this point, obviously it's a 1v4. So we tried to go with Kansan getting that kill, obviously. But Empire do a good job of covering their bases. They have a kitchen player holding the, the jump in. Shepard plays this well and he doesn't overexpose after. And essentially the round was over before it began. So now we're going to go back to hookah here and already you'll see that we've made a slight change. And this is something I think that we do better than most teams. Yeti's gone off the lion now and he's going to go to Yana. So while, yeah, we are using, we are losing the flashbangs from lion. If you've noticed, we haven't really used them anyway. Instead, Yeti now has the Yana so that he can clear the gates and he'll have a gone to clear any camps potentially we also noticed from the round before when they went to hookah they were not running jaeger for this site so the flashbangs aren't as important as typically they would be so empire as you see they've also made a slight change here and they have gated this wall which we like to open to put pressure onto the cool vibe side So Rexon's on the roof. Obviously, he spots that there's a Malusi in the hall, so he's not going to be able to late walk up the 90 hall, which sometimes he may do if we force the team back into 90. And he's going to do a good job here getting the mute off the wall, but unfortunately, that's all he can get. Now, now all we have to do really is to get this gate off the wall, and we could potentially open up this uh, cool vibe wall. I believe Rixer just wasted a nade. I'm not sure what he was doing, to be honest. Uh, he threw a nade at the door, so I wonder... I am I think he was trying to clear the Malusi. Uh, I think there's actually a Malusi here, so he was trying to nade under the door to blow up the Malusi, but I'm not sure that it actually uh, hit. 
to see exactly what's going on inside of the face place. We have a member of the Sonic Storm Team, Lord Orc Sunrise. So he uses both nades, and unfortunately, neither nade is going to clear this Malusi. And this is a situation where I think Grixer or Kanzen, the people clearing, could have asked Yeti, who's right next to them, to come Yana this door. So that this would be much easier than we're making it to be. And once again, this is kind of causing us to stall out, which Yeti does now, but I think we wasted two nades before we did that. So still, we need to get the gate off of the other wall. And once again, this is kind of just taking us longer than it usually or it should take. So we're nading the wall. We nade the gate. We're acing it. And they have impacts this time. And Shepard is also on this pirate wall, which allows him to potentially shoot these off. And we're just trying to get the wall open. So now we know we have one ace left, but now he's able to get the gate back up. And Scyther, seemingly a little based off of time, just runs across and gets the wall, Get shoots Kansan, I think, peeking off the wall. But now, because the Brexen is going 90, nobody was holding pirate, and we were unable to get the uh, wall open, which we were spending all of that time doing in the first place. So... Once again, on the side of the Sonics, we're just taking too long to do things here, where typically we don't really take that long. We're one of the more faster-paced teams. So Re Rexon has a good position here because he is 90, and I do not believe they're necessarily aware of it. Scyther may be aware of it. It's uh, Rexon may be triggered that Malusi, but he does have a good position behind them. Yeah, so he knows there's a Malusi there, but he does have this back pressure that they have to worry about. And Grix is going to be able to take out Dan and help us out there. Unfortunately, Joystick kills Yeti underneath. And Grixer, if, as you, if you didn't know, you can Finca go through the gate and basically it doesn't really do anything. But... Uh, he was unable to connect on the headshot, so this is now a 4v2 for me and Rexon. Rexon hits a nice shot to make this a 3v2. I dropped the bomb outside because basically what we decide is this is going to be impossible to walk in hookah because of the cool vibe player, and we know there's a player hookah side. But we know Joystick is downstairs. So I decide to drop the bomb and try to walk into Sunrise and maybe Joystick's not paying attention to Sunrise anymore. Unfortunately, he was holding Sunrise. So now this is an unwinnable round. Now, once again, we're just taking too late. There's nothing that Empire is doing here that we have not seen before. I, I honestly think this is an issue of just us never being in this position and playing playing a little i guess you'd say nervous and showing them too much respect we're not clearing things well and yes some of this is definitely due to us banning habana and bringing ace because we don't have the typical clear but it shouldn't make this much of a difference we're just stalling out very very bad in situations where normally you know this is a very fast-paced uh attack for us so we're down 4-0 right now, and believe it or not, we do win this match. <laughs> so Yeti's going to go back to the Lion because now we know they're going to go Kitchen. And as you see here, we're going to make some small adjustments. So Scyther tries to spawn peek me. He misses, but we know he's there, and then Grixer is going to be able to kill him because of obviously we call he spawn peeking hookah window. Grixer makes does a good job of getting up there quickly, and he's going to get the opening kill for us. And then he'll give me some health back. Much appreciated. And now, obviously, I am also aware of the setup in sight for Empire where they're stacking a lot towards uh, service side. So 
so for whatever reason always here decided to uh leave theater and i'm not sure if they thought we were going to do something else because they're all running back to site and he's going to try to get a c4 pick i think off a of mazikam which can be too late on but they just give us top after we get that opening pick which is obviously going to help us and now kansan does have the ability to sledge above and put some pressure towards service So unfortunately, Kansan is going to get killed from that pre-play C4 that Dan had. But Kansan was able to apply some of these holes. So we do have, obviously, a lot of vertical pressure here still. So we know that one player is main lobby and Rexen has rotated out to front door. What we want to do this round is basically push main lobby so we can take control of main lobby and it's going to be easier for us to do the push that we want to do. Rexer is also pressuring Shepard here on Sunrise at the same time as you're seeing if he had an opportunity to potentially take him out. Which he doesn't, but he comes out of that ahead in the HP. And I'm outside of service, waiting for my team, basically, to take control of main lobby. And I'm trying to pressure Dan here so he can't necessarily swing bathroom. I do a lot of damage to him, but obviously now I have to reload. And he runs by and he takes out the lion. But Dan's going to get traded immediately because we were able to take that main lobby pressure that we decided we wanted to do. And now Grixer is going to take advantage of nobody playing above. And he's going to take out Joystick on Cool Vibe. So now we have a 2v3. We also know that Always was main lobby. Grixer obviously already knows that Shepard was inside of Sunrise because he shot at him earlier. And so I'm just going to run into service now. And the round's over. So a small adjustment from us and how we wanted to take this, which was basically pressure main lobby pressure the backside and pressure service and we win all the trades out and win that round pretty comfortably even though our vertical player was eliminated so now empire are going to go blue and once again we'll make some small adjustments so what i noticed the round before was that empire did not hold top at all we have a sledge so we have a pre-placed drone we see this is free and kanzen is just going to try to get top as fast as he can so that nobody can rotate here which he does so now we have immediate top control so kanzen can sledge above and we're holding a white drone as well so we know like literally all of top is clear so kanzen is able to take out all the cams and now he has this top pressure and that's extremely fast compared to how slow we were moving before. So I would say at this point, we're probably getting at least a little bit more comfortable inside of the map. So Kansan's going to continue to sledge and myself and Grixer are still going to do the same thing in terms of mud and try to get the wall open. Joystick's going to miss a C4. And as we continue to sledge, just working site, droning for the sledge. And Joystick makes a good aggressive play there, and he's able to take out Yeti. And Kansen's going to clear this Malusi now. Also, a pretty nice nade that could have caught him off, but it did go my. But he'll clear the Malusi, so now that pressure is there. So for this site, with the top pressure we have, basically we're holding a flank cam and we're working above and we're just looking for picks because Empire are going to have to react at some point, usually. Either somebody will try to flank or somebody's going to try to have to get in a position to stop plant, especially now that we have Mudwall open 
and they're going to feel pressured to do something. So as you see, Kansan does get that pick above. And also what you'll notice here is based off of that kill, I'm going to go for the plant. And also I believe I've opened the hatch to put even more pressure on them. And Rexen knows off this ping that we have an office that there's an office player. So he's going to wait and push off of this. But as you see, as we start going and then we lose a, I, when I go in for the plant, Shepard kills me, Rexen kills always, and then Grixer trades Shepard. So now we have the 2v3 playing the trades. Obviously, once again, I die running in with the bomb, but it doesn't matter because we're trading it. And Rexen already knows that the Jaeger is blue or office, and he has to rotate in to stop plant. Rexen takes him out and Grixer finishes off the round. So two much better attacks from us and us kind of using what I would say small adaptations to uh, bring the round back. So now heading into our defense, what we identified before from our first match against Empire and Coastline is we actually lost. We lost that map 7-5 and over the course of that map, we lost four 2v2s. So in reality, that was not a map that we should have lost. But the other thing we learned about playing Empire is they are very methodical, but for the most part, they do not pressure site until the last 30 seconds or so of the round. And they're a team that is very much so playing for execute. So we make one small change here to our lineup based off of what they did. And uh, Rexen is going to go a Rooney here to pressure service because typically they were doing service takes instead of Alibi, which he had been playing before uh, against them on this map. He's also going to put a bulletproof from main lobby because once again, this is a team that does favor uh, service side takes. So the idea of this strat, as you see these walls and you're playing hookah, is if you're not cleared out hookah side, you can play vase and you can play billiard and you can play these long holes. So you protect the kitchen side from a buck or sledge so that I and maybe somebody else have the ability to still play inside of kitchen without threat of above. And that gives us a little bit of a chance to stop, to stop uh, service side pushes. So obviously always is aware of this. But those holes scare him to where he cannot make the hole, the vertical pressures that he would like to, as you see, I'm in this area. Now, Joystick is going to try to creep up here, but we have a well-placed proxy mine that I believe we hear and gives away his position as you see us reacting to it. And Joystick knows, obviously, that we're aware of it off the pre-fire from Grixer. And so he decides to back off. and empire are taking a decent amount of time now always has gotten into a decent position here because obviously we did get distracted by joystick so he actually does have a little bit of a chance now to apply the vertical pressure towards site if he wanted to joystick's going to kill kanzen uh i'm not sure where that was i think maybe main lobby side And then a big exchange of HP, basically both Grixer and Joystick losing 90 HP. But 
we've lost main lobby however we do know they are in main lobby and now he clears the cam so 25 seconds left and as i said empire is a team typically that want to execute 30 seconds or less the problem is is that now always is able to apply this vertical pressure to site which puts me in a very difficult position and we do not have main lobby control but yeti is able to sneak past the buck because the buck now is focused on kitchen so yeti's able to get into the bathroom and he's able to trade out the main lobby player to even this back up to at 4-4 four, four. unfortunately he's kind of stuck in a, a weird spot this is obviously hindsight but i think yeti could have just stayed in this area and been okay obviously he doesn't know the position of the of empire so he tries to go back and unfortunately he dies to uh service so grixer's able to kill scyther behind us shepherd kills grixer behind me and then there's double fire on us here and of course i died to a broken mantle so off of that they win the round with about five seconds which is typical for them but remember we had main lobby control because we killed dan main lobby so Rexens playing for the late round. They don't have a main lobby player. Rexens able to down the bomb and win the game. And then as you see, they even tried to run in the gate, which Joystick couldn't clear. And he's going to get downed. So we basically do such a good job here of biding time and not giving kills. And even here, I could have done this without swinging, actually. I was probably dead here no matter what but we wasted so much time and rexon was able to retake main lobby that they can't win the round so now we try we decide to try penthouse because the previous time we played empire on this map we didn't play penthouse against them and we had not used mira against them and i also noticed that dan was not playing Thatcher uh, like we had seen before. He was playing Finca, so they decided, they, I guess they noticed the same thing we did, that Thatcher was not a great operator for them. So we decided to try Penthouse because in theory, they would have difficulty uh, dealing with our Miras. So Dan tries to get a very early pick right behind the Mira, but obviously we're aware of, you know, the nades to the floor. So we're just playing in off positions that you wouldn't expect somebody to be sitting in at the beginning of the round. So Ace is going to get this wall open, but to be honest, this wall doesn't really matter for what we're doing. As you see, we're playing more long angles and we have a mirror so they can't actually really do anything here. Unfortunately, Kansan exposes to joystick on big window and he's going to lose his life so that's going to give them another opening kill which puts us at a little bit of a deficit and that's also a player who has wamise which could potentially help uh site late especially because they're running uh four grenades or even 90 late So they're trying to twitch run the mirror i'm assuming they missed it but what you guys didn't see is during this they naded open our wall so i am now stuck literally right here and if i move either way i'm being held so 
And I'm getting pinged. And so I'm going to get downed. Drexler's going to hit a crazy shot there, and that's going to give him the ability to pick me up. But they're going to drone us once again and see that I was picked up. And yet he's going to kill always trying to walk in from behind us. Obviously, what we don't know, and now that I get picked up, I'm in the same position, so I die again. <laughs> and Joystick is now going to walk up behind us, but when I get down, they're pushing through, basically. And we trade out Shepard, and then Scyther also gets down, so this is now a 3v1. Unfortunately, Yeti stopped holding the luggage main side because obviously we weren't aware of Joystick's position. So he turned around to assist Theater because the bomb is down over here and Joystick walks up behind us, kills Yeti and downs Grixer. And it's now 1v1 and Joystick just wins the 1v1 against Rexen. Obviously the hindsight play is Yeti should just sit top white and still hold luggage. Uh, especially because we still have the 90 cam up, so they can't walk 90. But, obviously, we were not aware of Joystick's position. And so, they won a 3v1 that would have turned this into a 4-4 game. So now we're going to go to Hookah, and I'm going to bring Alibi, because I need something that can make holes, and I also want a shield. Obviously, in this situation, typically I'm Smoke, and I have a shield here to protect me from Hookah. And we're going to once again put the same mirror here to pressure VIP, especially because we know Empire are a team that like to uh, typically pressure Aqua side and come through theater. And I've actually uh, decided in this instance to give Rex in the shield instead of me because we know that they push theater so that he has a little bit of an area to play behind with the Aruni. So Empire nade the shield from underneath, which they're pretty good at doing. And now Rexon's going to be in a little bit of a difficult position. But as you heard, Kansan is trying to feed him uh, Wamai's to help him. And now they're going to ace open um, Rexon's wall here, too. Typically, I think he has a mute here. I'm wondering if the Nate under blew up the mute as well. Obviously, I'm on the cam. We're going to see that joystick is underneath. And he's going to waste a Nate on the barb. And that's just to put pressure, even if he has no intent of coming up right now he now has the option to potentially later in the round and now two people are going to walk up uh white typically we would be playing uh in this area around luggage yeti would be here but because always is on the roof and we know he's on the roof we can't play in this area to assist rexon and rexon's going to be uh pressured by several people now and dan hits a really nice shot on kansan on 90 Rexon, however, at least takes out one, but he's clearly in a very rough position here and unable to get a second. But once again, we are killing a decent amount of time. 
So now it's a 3v4 for myself, Grixer, or sorry, myself, Grixer, and Yeti. So I'm playing cool vibe. Grixer's playing in this 90 area. I'm not sure where Yeti is at this very moment. I believe he's in Aqua. And typically, we know that they are going to uh, try to pressure Aqua's side. Yeah, Yeti is in Aqua. So as you see, Yeti and Grixer both rotate more towards the Aqua side. And I'm basically just solo holding Cool and Hookah because we know typically they're going to push this Aqua side. And as Alibi, I don't have any denial anyway. And once again, Empire going very low on time. Dan's going to end up taking out Grixer. And so this is now a 4v2. And there's a player on my hookah uh, balcony, as you see. And I'm going to kill the player on uh, hookah balc. But unfortunately, as that happens, Scyther is going to take out... Actually, I kill a player... So sorry, now I remember... I kill a player 90, and we know Dan is outside. Unfortunately, Yeti dies, but they're spam flashing, and now we know nobody's 90, and, and Dan cannot get through the gate because he'll die. So we know it's just one covering, one on bomb. So I swing, I take out the player who's covering, and I kill the bomb literally right after it's planted. But I know that Dan was on Hookah Balk, and he can't actually come inside. So I just try to stick it, but he does a, a good job of quickly realizing the situation. I try to get off the bomb, but unfortunately I wasn't able to do it quick enough. So now down six, three, we're going to go kitchen and here come some of our adjustments again. Now we're going to have Kansan go Cade over the mute to give us more protection above and to Cade the main lobby hatch so they can't open up the main lobby hatch. And as we do that, I guess Empire decide they're not even going to bring a breach this round. They want Dokubi. As you see, same setup from us. And these are what I call micro adjustments, where you make a small change in the game to do something that you want, that you think will help you. But you're not changing your entire strategy. If you'll notice here, we also start off a little different. We know that Empire are not going to rush site because Empire will never rush site. So rather than Yeti start underneath in Sunrise, he starts above. So we have three people above here. And I am going to just float between Service and or, uh, Sunrise and Kitchen to start this game. So Yeti here, once we realize they're not doing a hookah side take, Yeti's going to float back and go to main lobby to assist Rexon because we know last time Empire did enter through main lobby uh, and tried to pressure the service door. Grixer also knows that Joystick last time tried to creep up luggage, so now he's playing in an area holding luggage. And now he's going to set off the gate, the alarm, which... We also moved to this area, so it wouldn't immediately trigger. And Grixer's going to kill him because Joystick tried to do the same thing he did the round before on this site. So that gives us the opening pick onto the Yana, which is also a big deal because site is double a Rooney gated. And again, these are all small micro adjustments that you make based off of what the other team is doing. I think this is something that our team excels at, which is adapting in the game, which is how we're able to bring stuff like this back. So 
The Grixar falls back off of that, and they're going to drone above and realize that. But now that Grixer did fall off, they're going to be able to buck above. Now, keep in mind, Grixer is Auric, so he can just hop right back up Aqua side, and it's harder for them to hold flank because that wall is cated. Typically, they open that wall, and they would just hold the hallway flank from outside. So they're pressuring us a lot inside, obviously, here. And Kansen's going to get a C4 pick onto always before he gets down to give us a 3v5, which is about to be a 3v4. That's a big pick. Obviously, it takes out Buck. They are running Sledge as well, so they will still have vertical pressure, but not as smooth. And I'm trapped now. I should have been playing back in Kitchen, but obviously, as we saw, because we did not have any pressure from Billiard, I can no longer play in Kitchen at risk of being bucked. So I was just trying to play inside of the bathroom. Uh, unfortunately, they had the Sledge and the Buck, and I was kind of stuck in a bad position but as i talked about grixer was able to jump back up the aqua hatch and he's going to do a ton of damage to dan and now that grixer is back in this position yeti can now play kitchen because grixer is now protecting the vertical holes for kitchen side and he's going to end up killing dan anyway so now we don't have any more sledge pressure so now Grixer, once again, he's going to drop back down to sight because we know once it gets to the 32nd mark, Empire want to execute on sight. But what can't they do? They can't really deal with these Aruni gates that well. And they're also getting Malucid, so they're going to walk in and Yeti's going to take one out. And Scyther is getting Malucid, stuck in a really bad position. Doesn't even have the bomb here. And this is a pretty unwinnable round. So our small adaptations basically win us the round. So now we're going to go to blue bar and uh, what you'll see here is we made some small adjustments from the last time we played them. We haven't played blue bar yet in this match, but Rexen is going to go onto the uh, a Rooney instead of what he typically plays, uh, which I believe is Alibi. And Grixer is going to go onto Alibi instead of what he typically plays, which I believe is Oryx, so that he still has the shield above Actually, no. I believe Grixer is normally out by here. I think Rexen got off of... I actually don't know what Rexen usually, usually is here, but he... We did make small adjustments because, one, we reinforce off this hatch. Normally, we leave this hatch open to, to, to drop down. We decide we want to reinforce this so that they can't use the hatch against us. And because they're only running ace, he'd have to use two pellets to open the hatch... So I have impacts and Kansen has impacts. So if he wants to try to ace open the mud wall, we can impact that and he won't have aces to either get the mud wall or to get the hatch. He can't do, he can't do both in this situation. And so Empire, they're going to do a top over clear and try to pressure Hookah. And we know that, so we've made another small adjustment. Typically, we have this shield billiards and it's pointed towards Aqua. What we decide to do here is Rexen is going to play this shield looking towards luggage just to pressure, pressure them a little bit more than normal. So again, small adjustments made based off of what they've already done. And that seemed like a little bit of timing, actually, for Rexen to drop right there. But he decides to give it up. But we still have two player playing in this hookah area. And they leave just in the nick of time. 
And so we wasted over half the round and Empire has not even been able to start sledging or anything yet. And as we talked about, likely they're going to be unable to open up the hatch because they have to use the aces on mud wall. Now, obviously Sight is going to be under a lot of pressure here because of the buck. And the buck is going to force us back and joysticks in a very aggressive position. Typically somebody should be holding this blue stairs, whether it's Yeti with a shotgun in this area or somebody from kitchen door, but usually joystick should not be able to just sit on the blue plat right here. So obviously I'm not aware that joystick is just sitting in the middle of the plat. And I'm going to sit here because they're bucking sight. So I just want to stay alive and let them buck and not risk dying. But joystick is in a position we're not aware of. And we do light him, but he's able to get away without a, uh, without a trade. But Rexon, he's going to take advantage of the fact that one, they haven't started, uh, bucking besides this area, which is the area I was playing. And two, that they can't open the hatch. So Rexon is now in a more of an aggressive position on the wall. And now Yeti's going to play the cool vibe area with a shotgun or SMG 11. And they're going to try to nade and force Yeti back. And he should be able to retake that position. Although Dan does have another nade. And once again, Empire, because they have to deal with our small adjustments, are taking very long to pressure site. And Rexon's able to kill Shepard outside of, of Blue. So now we know that Empire is attempting to do a different take here. And that is, they want to plant the bomb Blue side. So now that we know the bomb is Blue side, Everybody on the team can essentially rotate to play a different area. So Grixer, now that he knows the bomb is going blue, can rotate main and he can try to challenge Aqua. Because if he gets control of Aqua Hatch, he then has a flank on them inside of blue. Rexen can continue to hold this door for blue. I just got a sub. Ignore that. Need to turn that off. <laughs> And Grixer kills somebody from above and then a second player from above. And now this is a 2v4 and Dan comes back to kill him. But now the bomb is down with 10 seconds left. Rexon actually gets bad timing there to not be holding the hatch. Kansan retakes main lobby because we know they're not main lobby. And Dan can't win this round. So once again, the small adjustments make Empire stall out and then they feel like they can't do their typical take. They try to do something else and we're able to rotate appropriately, appropriately off that, even though Joystick was able to get that opening kill because we weren't aware of his position. So now we're going to go back to Hookah and again, you're going to see a small change. This time I'm going to bring Castle instead of the Alibi that I brought before because we want to just castle basically all of the windows and force them to have to ace them potentially or use gone or nade on them because if i castle this if i castle this if i castle this and then whatever else i want to castle only these are really sledgeable and he's not going to most likely just drop down to blacktop and sledge those in the middle of the map so based off the lineup they're bringing, we decide to bring Castle. Now, one thing you'll notice is they also make a change. They decide to bring Thatcher finally so that they can have an easier time dealing with the Miras that Grixer is going to put down. So you hear them immediately gone six, one in the castle. So that's going to be one gone. That is gone. No pun intended. And now Joystick's going to use another nade on that castle. So they've now used a gone in both nades from Joystick. Dan's going to use another nade. So now they only have one nade left. 
towards Nick, and he is not at the back end of that space. And so he'll be kind of on towards the actual theater door, towards the penthouse, kind of on top of this mute jammer, more than likely aware that it could possibly be bringing dope again. So he's and they're going to attempt to ace this wall, which is muted, but obviously we don't know this, but they have Thatcher, so they're going to be able to get it. And Kansan's able to impact at least Rexon's wall, but his wall is going to get opened as his impact did not connect. So now what Kansan knows is essentially he just needs to stay here and try to waste as much time as he can. Because if he sits here in the hall and they push out 90 to kill him, we can trade him. You'll also notice that this round... We can see it. You'll notice here uh, in a second that Yeti this time is actually playing white behind Rexon to try to protect him from what happened last round, which is where they walked up the main lobby stairs on him. Obviously, what we don't know is that all of Empire are actually in theater this time. But that's another small adjustment to try to prevent what happened last time. And now Yeti's going underneath. He could potentially try to C4 somebody. And now they're going to open up his wall. Kanzen's doing a good job of staying alive. Keep an eye on the time. And as you see, I, like always, am just sitting here on cams to make sure nobody's trying to creep around the map or anything. So Yeti's playing this white stairs. And Rexon's going to end up killing Joystick. And then that's their last nade now because they had to use their nades on the castles. And now Rexon is stuck because obviously always is holding him. There's nothing he can really do here but sit here and try to waste as much time as possible. And still, Kanzen and Rexen are doing an extremely good job of wasting a lot of time here. Rexen finally going to be taken out at 54 seconds, and now Kanzen is in a rough spot because he's trapped 90, and now they can push Theater behind him. He's going to get flashed, or somehow not flash. So now it's up to Yeti, really, to try to protect Kanzen, but Yeti's walls here are completely soft, so it's not it's easier said than done. And Scyther is able to swing... Uh, Scyther's able to swing Kanzen on 90. And then, unfortunately, Yeti's not going to get the trade, and Scyther's going to take him out. So now, this is a 2v4, but... It's a 2v4 with only 40 seconds left. We know where their entire team is, and they have no utility. So we're obviously aware that they have no utility, and this castle big window is never open, so Grixer knows that he doesn't have to worry about big window at all. Dan's wildly spraying at the wall. And what they're going to do is they try to drone through Aqua to see if they can do the take they normally do. And what they realize is they can't because Grix is going to shoot the, the drone and they don't want to blindly push into that and they don't really have time with 20 seconds. So what I did was I popped the mirror so we could play the opposite side of the mirror. And then I swing a little bit on Dan and light him up, and he falls back. And then always also is going to get lit by Grixer. So now we have this crossfire, really, and they can't actually clear us because they don't have any flashbangs or grenades. And Grixer is going to make a very aggressive play and able to take advantage of this player not expecting it. And he's going to down Ace in the hallway. And also we're going to know that's Bomb. So then I'm going to fall back to the mirror here and I'm pepper shotting the hallway. As 
always tries to crouch walk up. And then he's going to swing onto Sledge. Kill him. And then we're getting the live ping from, I think, my bulletproof on Castle. As I was playing on the opposite side of the mirror. And now we take out him. So, obviously, fantastic job by the team wasting utility. And a great play by Pablo there to, to hit all the shots at the end of that round. So now, once again, we're going to Kitchen and we're going to make another small adjustment. Kansan is going to show Cade and they're going to show Thatcher, but we decided to stick the Cade because, honestly, we didn't believe that they were not going to run Sledge because they always do. And then Yeti decides to drop the Malusi for Echo so that we have more vision on where they are. And to help with the shield and sight, obviously. So Kansan's going to Cade the same thing. And they try to clear things very fast this round. They burn the gate, they burn the shield, and initially we thought maybe they'll try to rush. But I think they were just trying to see if we would overreact to what they're doing. And obviously we didn't overreact. They just cleared the shield. So Yeti decides to back up out of Sunrise because he's Echo and he doesn't want to fight that. So I decide that I'm just going to fill it for him and I'll play here because I'm a little bit more of a mobile operator and I have Wamai to potentially waste time. One thing you'll notice is that Empire this round has decided to do more of a Sunrise overtake. So I'm just going to sit in here for a little bit and shoot drones just so it's not completely free for them. And once they buck above me, I'm going to leave. But still wasting a decent amount of time. And now we're out and back in sight. But we do know now that they're not playing above. So what I decided to do is use my impact to make a rotate into the hallway so we can swing the hall if we need to. Because obviously we don't have any blue holes here or any uh, kitchen holes. So Kansan, they just, they never cleared him above. He's going to take an aggressive position on T-Hunt and he's going to hit a nice shot onto Joystick. And Dan's going to get downed as well by Rexon. And he's going to fall back to security. So it's now 5v3 for us with Echo up. And this time they have no vertical pressure. Now I'm going to play main lobby now because I'm the most useless operator in this situation. And I'm going to give Yeti a Wamai just in case they do try to nade him inside of uh, beer. And always is going to get himself stuck in a corner there as we have no top pressure and Kansan's going to take him out and turn this into a 2v5. Shepard's going to rotate to service because he knows he can kill Kansan in that spot. But in reality, what does this do? There's 25 seconds and now they've separated from each other and there's still a Rooney Gates for the main side. Scyther's going to throw a nade at Kansan. So nice coordination there and he's going to push into sight. But we know he's pushing into sight because Yeti brought the echoes this round and his position is given away. So Grixer now is holding him from main lobby or from courtyard. I'm holding from main lobby so they can't walk in service at Yeti. Yeti's just playing his life. And Rexon, I believe, is also main lobby with me. Rexon's going to take out Shepard. Grix is going to take out Scyther. And once again, our small adjustments seemingly win the round for us. So here we are going to make more adjustments. We know that they're going to go hookah with this lineup that they're showing. What we decide to do is we're going to bring Osa and we're going to go for an aqua take. They were stacking more and more utility for us, attacking hookah, as we notice. And we were taking slower than usual uh, to attack hookah. 
So we decide that we want to do a uh, aqua side take. So we get an early drone here in office and obviously uh, Scyther is not expecting us to push him here because we haven't done this yet. And he's getting red pinged and now he's kind of stuck in office and blue bar. And Kansan's going to take him out and that's going to give us the opening pick onto Scyther. And always decides to back up and now we have control of office so really we don't need to worry about the C4s. So the other thing you're going to see us do here is we're still trying to confuse Empire. So we still open up Hookah and we're still acting as if we're trying to clear it with flashbangs. Uh, and the pressure, the same windows are shot down. So we're still trying to make Empire think that we're doing the same thing as we're throwing flashbangs at them Hookah. So Joystick, as you see... He's shooting towards the hookah repel because obviously normally he knows I'm on that repel to open the wall. And they're a little confused on what we're actually doing. So we drone always here on luggage side. And Kansas is protecting our under so that we can't get C forward when we want to go for our execute. We set up a shield with the Osa that we six picked here too to protect our flank because typically maybe we would bring nomad here and nomad off luggage but they ban nomad so the osis going to protect us from the flank and it'll also give us an opportunity to plant the bomb behind the shield brixer is still going to be outside of hookah pressuring pressuring hookah and they're going to start using some of their smokes rex and spots that sneaky bulletproof right there but now we're going to call grixer over to come clear this malusi During that time, what you'll notice I did is I went to the roof and because I know that they didn't mute this wall because all of their mutes are for hookah side, which we have been doing every round, there's nothing on this wall. So now they can't play billiard wall. And yet he's playing the roof to try to use those holes against them. So Grixer's finally able to rotate towards us and he's going to nade off this my, off this Malusi. Dan obviously feels pressured to swing because they can't do anything to stop the plant, but he can't do anything about it because we have a shield staring at him and he's going to get taken out. So now I'm going to go for the plant. Kansan's still holding under. Rixer's holding the flank, and yet he's on the roof holding any any crazy swings here. So he's going to take out Rexen, who is on the cover, but he's going to get traded. I'm planting, and the bomb's going to go down, or we'll kill them, and we win the game. So what I think it's important to note is, is we were able to bring this back really by making small micro adjustments. Sure. I think we started off this game very slowly and didn't play how we typically do, but all of the micro adjustments that we made through the game that to be honest, empire didn't really do ended up winning us this game. Reviewing this with you guys, I'm, I was purposefully not trying to say anything in hindsight and just give you our reasoning for the things we did. Obviously, everything we did wasn't perfect. Obviously, we made mistakes and had misplays because we don't have the information that you do as an observer or you do as a fan or you do watching a VOD. But I hope that it at least tells you or shows you 
the reasoning we have behind some of the things we do. Let me know if you guys enjoy this, if you'd like to see this in the future, and I'll see you sometime soon for episode four.